Hi, this is Phil Newman. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Longevity Technology, and I'm delighted to say that I'm being joined by uh, Naveen Jain, who's a, uh, a co-presenter at this year's Radfest. Hey, Naveen. Hi, Fazal, Phil. It's an absolute pleasure to be speaking with you. There are not very many people in this space who actually have an idea of what's going on. So I'm just looking forward to our conversation. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, do you know what, Naveen? I, I have to say, I've I've started using this phrase myself now, which is where I see the longevity industry has actually yeah, yeah. gone from a movement into an industry. And I can yeah. see it happening everywhere now. Well, it's really interesting is the idea of the people have about longevity is very different. So they use the same word, but they have a different meaning. So some people think about longevity as living forever. And in my opinion, the longevity is about living healthy for as long as you live. And then, of course, you want to live a longer time, but it doesn't, what you don't want to live is live longer and be sick. That's not what the, anybody wants in the longevity space. So to me, it's about increasing the health span while, for, and if I think you can increase the health span, you can increase the lifespan as well. Absolutely. So, so let's talk a little bit about your uh, your background, Naveen, because you're okay. you're working in your various moonshots, which all sound fascinating. Yep. But one of those, of course, is your your company Viome, right? Which have done yes, yes. has done some great work. Uh, I had a look at the site, and I totally understand what uh, what you guys are doing at the moment. But you know, what what's happening with the company? What are you? What's the business like now? And where are you where are you yep. going in the future? Well, if you think about it, I think the problem with this space has been that everyone is looking for this elixir of life, the fountain of youth, or there is a you know, silver bullet that will make everyone suddenly healthy and live longer. And I really think that is a, actually a place I think is going to be a mirage. We're never going to find that. What is going to happen will be for a specific each person, we have to be able to analyze and understand at a biochemical level what is going on in that person's body and to be able to work with the N of one and actually be able to come up with a personalized, precise food recommendation, supplements, whatever you need, the early diagnostic for each individual that are going to be different for everyone else, right? And to me, that is where the world needs to be headed is the finally we're going to have with the advent of robotics and AI, this is the first time we're going to have literally custom made orders for each individual. So nutrients that are designed just for you, just what you need and nothing that you don't. Understood. And, and of course, you know, the your, your focus is the microbiome. And we all understand that the uh, uh, the gut is one of these areas, which is, is is a big growing area, you know, in terms of commerce, mm -hmm. it was, I think it's going to be uh, 1,370 million by uh, 2029. So it's going to be a big industry. And of course, in order to, to get uh, your personalization, you need to have mm -hmm. Uh, the right type of uh, biomarker information coming in and you need to then obviously track your progress as well. So tell me a little bit more about what you're doing with Viome. Well, so again, uh, gut microbiome is important, but that is just one of the many pieces that need to fit together. Uh, most people have this idea that digestion starts in their, uh, once the food reaches their stomach. In fact, the digestion starts when they put the food, you put the food in your mouth. And your oral microbiome in the saliva is actually the first time your food starts to get pre-digested. So we are one of the few companies that are looking at the top of the top of the tube. So we look at your saliva. And then we look at the bottom of the tube, we look at your stool, and then we look at the other side of the tube, looking at the blood and fingerprint blood. And now we are able to look at mRNA, the actually the gene expression that's happening in every part of your body. So by looking at gene expression, unlike looking at the genes, tells you what is going on right now, not what could happen, what is happening right now. And I think by doing that, we are able to look at not just the microbial activities. So by looking at the mRNA and a non-coding RNA, we are looking at the microbial activity of what they are actually producing, what molecules are being produced, and how they are interacting with the human host. So we can look at all the cytokine markers. We can look at all the binding molecules, all the signaling molecules. And then we are able to now not only really tell you What's your biological age? What's your immune health? What's your oral health? What's your cardiac health? What's your cognitive health? And we just don't really simply say, and good luck. And then we tell you, here are the foods you should not eat. And here is why. 
So don't eat broccoli because your sulfide production is too high. Don't eat avocado because your uric acid production is too high. And by the way, don't take a curcumin because your bile acid production is too high. Or take these foods and here is why. Don't take these supplements and here are the nutrients your body does need. You do need 22 milligram of elderberry every day. You do need 79 milligram of berberine every day. You do need 89 milligram of amylase every day. And we actually like a compounding pharmacy robotically make those capsules with only those ingredients in that dosage for each individual every month. And as we reanalyze your body again, we actually readjust the nutrients your body needs. So imagine a custom formula for each individual every single time when they do the test. It's not for life. Remember, what is happening today may not be same as six months from now. And I want people to you know, maybe take a step back. I think a lot of people get confused between their DNA or genes and what we do, which is RNA. Remember, your DNA is static for large, for all practical purposes. Every part of our body has identical DNA. Remember, we start with a one single fertilized egg, same DNA, and it becomes your hair, you becomes your eyes and your skin and the nails and a finger. Why is it we don't have the eyes growing on our finger and the nails growing on our head? It's a gene expression that is constantly changing. And we measure the gene expression to know what story is being written. So DNA is like an alphabet and RNA tells you the story being written. So by looking at RNA, we can tell you that actually the story being written, what molecules are being produced, what amino acids are being produced. And then we can actually modulate them using food and supplements. And that's one part of our business. And the second part of our business that's really interesting, you might find fascinating is now having analyzed over 350,000 samples, we are able to diagnose and predict the chronic diseases before they happen. So we can say, hey, this is where you are. This is the biomarker for all the different people who have diabetes or heart disease or depression or anxiety. And we can see, are you moving towards the disease or moving away? So as you change your lifestyle, your disease risk keeps changing. Then we are able to detect early stage cancers. So we are just launching a test for cancer detect to detect stage one, oral cancer, stage one throat cancer. And then we're going down from the top of the tube, oral cancer, throat cancer. Now we're going down to the breast cancer, you know, esophageal cancer, stomach cancer, colorectal cancer, prostate cancer, and then things like NASH and NAFRD, IBD and IBS. The goal really is to diagnose not just when they happen, but also to be able to look at a precursor. Can we detect colon polyps before they turn into a colon cancer? Can we look at the lesion before they turn into a cancer? And the idea is to get earlier and earlier. Can we look at the high insulin before it becomes high glucose, before it becomes high, it becomes a HbA1c, which is the diabetes. So really looking at the precursor and modulating them while they are still uh, easy to do. Fascinating. I guess the question that's in my mind is scalability, because yes. you mentioned AI. There's a lot yep. of data coming in there. I mean, I, I refer to this as four-dimensional data in the way that I think about yep. it, because obviously yep. it's the uh, it's the interaction between different biomarkers as well, which yep. of course is, yep. is very key. So um, yep. you obviously must have sunk a lot of efforts to get into your, your, your models. But I mean, do you still have uh, human intervention in this, or is it completely scalable through AI now? Well, it's just completely scalable through AI now. In fact, all the testing is done through robotics. Every single mRNA, uh, you know, in, 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 in terms of extracting the RNA, in terms of really analyzing everything is all automated. At the back end, all the recommendations are completely driven by AI. As I said, we have now in our database 450 trillion 450 trillion nucleotides, almost half a quadrillion RNA base, base pairs that we have already analyzed. So massive data sets with massive amount of AI completely driven robotically. So the human intervention only comes in in the early days to make sure that things are not, AI has not completely gone haywire. So does it still make sense that from a human biological perspective that we are recommending this? Wow. So in terms of um, where this fits now in the advent of the industry, now I look upon uh, longevity. I know you're very clear yep. that this is about health span. Uh, do you feel that the wellness industry is ready for longevity? Do you see it happening in your interactions with uh, 
with whether it's, you know, big food conglomerates or big retailers? I mean, what, what's happening out there in people's expectations and understanding about this space? Well, think about it. Wellness industry is the only industry that actually understood the concept of lifespan and the health span. Think about it. wellness was about preventing the disease from happening. That is what the health span is, right? So increasing, really looking at how do you in, how do you prevent something from happening in the first place? And that to me is really the first part. Second part is to diagnose them early while you still can cure them and then have cure for the diseases that have never been cured. So whether it is an autoimmune disease, you don't simply want to suppress your immune system. You want to be able to understand the root cause of what is causing the immune system to attack itself, uh, attack the body and fix that part thing, right? Fix the things that have never been cured, things like uh, why do people actually have these underlying issues? So people may have inflammation, but what is the root cause of inflammation? And if you can fix that, many of the things we call diseases are uh, fundamentally are unease of the body. That's why it's called dis-ease, which is disease. And if you can really get rid of the uh, dis-ease, then you can bring the body back into the homeostasis. And I think one of the concepts that I really find fascinating, Phil, I don't know if you ever heard, that we are really made up of the cells and these cells are intelligent in themselves. And what makes us human is the interconnectedness and the communication between the cells. And there are microbial cells, which is 100 to 1, if you look at in terms of the amount of genes that are being expressed by microbial in, microbes in our body, it's give or take 2 million to 20 million compared to 22,000 protein coding genes, right? So literally the communication between the microbial uh, gene, gene expression and the human gene expression, that is really the, at the core of who we are. So it's not about them and us, it is about consensual we, and we co-engineer and we co-develop the human body. And when that a pact between us and them, the pact between the microbes and us gets broken because we start eating the stuff that's not good for them. They actually break the pact and say, in that case, we can't produce the nutrient that you need. And then suddenly you have the body that is no longer actually at ease and homeostasis. Very good. So uh, Ravfest is coming up. Um, two questions yes. I'd like to discuss with you about that. Um, cool. what, what are you planning on uh, speaking about at the conference? Well, you know, the, the, the truth be told is that it is going to be at the moment when I wake up and say, what's the subject I'm going to talk about? But it's going to be about longevity and the latest learning. So by that time, we would have analyzed another 50,000 more samples and we would have the latest data. So my really the food, my food for thought would be to give everyone the most cutting edge knowledge we have about what is making people sick and how to get people to stay healthy and longer for the, you know, as long as they want to live. Now, obviously, one of your other moonshots is being involved in the Singularity Group. Yes, um, yes. How, do, how important do you feel uh, the element of community is in longevity at the moment? I mean, we, we all seem to be getting on well with each other. It hasn't got overtly competitive yet at this stage. Can we keep that vibe going, do you think? I think at the end of the day, we can't win by fighting with each other. This is really is for the common good. We all will succeed or we'll all fail together. So to me, this is one space where we can all come together and believe when you win, I win. And when I win, you win. So in some sense, if I can find a solution that will help you live long time, why would you say, I hate you? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh, Radfest is coming up on October the 6th to 9th in San Diego. Uh, Naveen, I'm really looking forward to meeting you and obviously listening to what you've got to say. And really, it's been a great pleasure speaking with you today. Well, it has been an absolute honor and a pleasure. I'm looking forward to meeting you in person. Great, Naveen. Take care. See you in October. Yeah, thank you.